Hello and welcome. This is Charles Folkart on March the 3rd, 2019. I was just thinking about how long it used to take me to get through that intro uh, when I first got going, when I did my first few videos. <laughs> I'll share with it, share that with you sometime later, perhaps, maybe. Then again, maybe not. Uh, this video is on um, Luke 19. Luke 19, so you might want to go get your Bible. But in the meantime, I want to remind you, I don't uh, take the time like I should probably to remind people to hit the little bell there so you get notified. I've subscribed to a few others and channels, and I, I, never, get, um, I never get notified, so you might not be getting notified either. I want to welcome the, the 100 or so new subscribers in the last month. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's pretty, uh, um, what's the word I want? I think that if um, I ever do get a lot of subscribers, it'll be for only one of two reasons. And I might be wrong here, but hey, I'm thinking off the cuff here, so forgive me. One is that um, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. I'm not telling the whole truth because most people do not want to hear. I, and, I, I, you know, I'm getting tired of almost using the word truth. It's, oh, isn't it overworked now? The, the truth. Everything now is the truth. Anyway, the, the Bible, thy word is truth. And so if I ever get a lot of subscribers, it'll be because I'm doing one, number one, I'm doing something wrong or number two. And I hope this is the case that Yahweh is doing something with the Israelite identity message. And I think the Israelite identity message is more important by the factor of 100 or more than the level playing earth. So maybe just maybe my observation is the level playing earth is going to be one of the vehicles to uh, act as the alarm clock to wake uh, our people up. Might be wrong. Then again, I've been correct a few times too. I've been looking at Luke 19 for quite a while and uh, playing over it. I, I think I told you I got a new Bible, and I've been uh, I really like this Bible for reading. And uh, it's called the Scriptures. It's from South Africa. There's a lot about it I, I don't really like. They could have improved it quite a bit. But hey, it's it's better than my Schofield um, for everyday reading. But then again, I end up going back to the King James Version usually all the time. I've been looking at Luke 19 and... When I got this this other Bible, this is called uh, Rotherham's Emphasized Bible. I just got this the other day. I looked in Luke 19 there in a verse, and it made it made me see the, the the whole passage in a different way that I've never seen before. And isn't that what's so exciting about the Word of God? Is that it's 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 infinite. I mean, you will. I will never get tired. I will never get bored. I will never run out of topics. I will never run out of uh, uh, things to learn. I will never. I will never, uh, in a hundred lifetimes, be able to fully comprehend the Word of God. If if I could, it wouldn't be the Word of God now, would it? Okay, we're going to read uh, Luke uh, chapter 19, about three minutes of it. I would suggest, I would recommend that you get your Bible and uh, read along. And I'm going to do something. I'm not sure if uh, I can do this or not, but I checked the Internet, and there's, there's quite a few of Alexander Scorby's King James Version of the Bible being read, and uh, I own a copy. So I thought I'm going to play that, and uh, maybe you could uh, either listen or read along. I hope that I don't get a copyright strike from the old YouTube channel. I don't need that over, <laughs> over the reading of the Bible. Wouldn't that be ironic? So here we go. Luke 19, Alexander Scorby. Chapter 19. 
And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. And he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidst not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, and slay them before me. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jerusalem. I think I'd like to bring out here in Luke uh, 19 uh, with Zacchaeus is that, one, he was a tax collector. The emphasis is on he's a tax collector and he was also rich. And it goes on there, and I like I like uh, Zacchaeus because he's short of stature, and he did what he had to do to be able to see the Lord. So he puts out um, it, in uh, the scripture version, this other Bible, it calls it Yeshua. So he wants to see Yeshua. You, you saw, he gets up in this tree, which is well known for its shade, and... You can read that for yourself. I don't need to go over that again. But he, the, the Yeshua says to him, after he tells the master what he's going to do if he's done wrong, uh, Yeshua says, Today delivery has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. And that's important here. It's not the point of this uh talk here this uh, discussion but it's important because the fruit show that he was the son of abraham now just contrast that with matthew 15 the woman there who the lord who yeshua called a dog that's for you to go and do we don't have time right now for in verse 10 he says for the son of adam has come to seek and save that which was lost now he's the son of adam he's not the son of uh this god or that god the buddha the, or the or you know all the other races 
Yeshua is the son of Adam. He says, For the son of Adam has come to seek and to say that which was lost. He, and he also said elsewhere that I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he hasn't come for everyone. I don't know why some of you Judeo Christians and others have such a hard time understanding the plain, simple truth of the Word of God. But that's your problem, not mine. You come to the right place if you want some help trying to overcome your handicap when it comes to the word understanding the Word of God. And the, the verse that got me when I read it in the emphasized Bible was verse 11. In verse 11 in the, in the King James, let me grab my Schofield. In the Schofield, verse 11 says, And as they heard these things, he added. And then in the scripture in verse 11, wait a minute, yeah. In the, in the scripture in verse 11, it says, And as they were hearing this, he spoke another parable. But in the emphasized Bible, which is, well, I'm really beginning to uh, in, uh, like this as a companion Bible, verse 11 says, And because they were hearing these things, and because they were hearing these things, he added and spoke a parable unto them. All right, so let's do a little recap. We got this short guy, Zacchaeus, who's very wealthy, and a tax collector, probably pretty well known, and the Lord wants to go and stay in his house. He says, well, I'm going to give back, um, I'm going to give back if I've taken anything. And there was a lot of people around, around Yeshua, and that's why Zacchaeus had to get up in the tree. All right? So the point here, I think, that's being made is because they were so receptive to Yeshua, and they were so interested in what he had to say and, uh, and do, etc. that he says, oh, you know what? These are some people that are worth spending some more time with. So then he goes on to tell them this parable. Read out of the Emphasis Bible here, verse 11. And because they were hearing these things, he added and spoke a parable because of his being near Jerusalem. And they're supposing that instantly was the kingdom of God to shine forth. He said, therefore, you've already heard Alexander Scorby in the King James Version, and you have your Bible there before you, or uh, um, you have the option to have your Bible before you. So I'm not going to read this whole thing again, but I want to call your attention to verse 13. First he called, the certain nobleman calls his ten servants and, and delivered them ten pounds and said, Occupy till I come. Do business, trade, be doing something to get an increase of the 10 pounds that I gave you. Do something. And then verse 19, there's a whole, I mean, sorry, verse 14, there's a different group of people here. See, here in 13, it's his servants, but in 14, it's his citizens, this certain nobleman, I believe, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and the kingdom was going to be where these people were or where he he already lived. He was just going to go get the okay, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him. The King James says a message, but the emphasize says an embassy, and the scripture version says um, delegation. So we have an embassy. They actually sent a group of men back after the noblemen and said, we will not have this man, your, your nobleman, rule over us. Now, that's going to become important at the end if you've ever heard of the verse about the sword. And uh, we're going to explain what that actually means here in, in, a, in a moment or two. But uh, so it came to pass when he came back. So 
you've all heard that uh, parable before, and uh, you know the parables are pretty fun because they're only meant for those people with eyes that have uh, those people that have eyes to see and ears to hear. And you you heard it that one servant had got one pound, came back with ten, multiplied it. One had five, came back with five. The one with ten got to be ruler over ten cities. The one with five got to be ruler over five cities. But the one that was given the pound, he hid it in a cloth somewhere, and um, he said that uh, you're an austere man, and uh, thou takest up what thou layest not down, and you reap where you did not sow. Anyway, you can read that yourself. The point I want to make on this one that just kind of hit me the other day in, in a different way is that um, um, the, the one that didn't produce, who didn't get an increase, had what he had been given to him taken away. He was given the working capital to, to make increase, and he, he didn't do it. And so that which he did have was taken away from him. What we're doing today in the world, the, the, the communists and the Democrats and the socialists, what they want to do is they want to take away from those who have, and they want to give it to those who don't have. They want to give it to those who don't produce. And that's exactly the opposite of Scripture. So the, the, the point that Yeshua is trying to make here, I believe, this is my understanding, and there's many, many ways, and I might see it in a different tinge or a different uh, slant next time, but Yeshua went to receive the kingdom, and he's going to come back. Remember, it, it, they thought he was going to come right now, instantly, to Jerusalem. And he's telling them, no, this nobleman has to go away. In the meanwhile, here's 10 pounds among the 10 servants. 10 pounds, and I assume one pound to each of the servants. And he wants to see what we're going to do with what he's given us. What he's given us. And I, and I have to relate here right now. I was involved as a as a teacher, one of many teachers in a Christian assembly back in the 80s, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And there was no pastor. There was no one man who was responsible for. We relied on the Holy Spirit to lead us. And all of us, all of the leading men had jobs. So... We weren't dependent on anybody else in the congregation to support us. We all were making our own tents. We were paying our own way. So there was no, no restriction. There was no um, hesitancy on our part to say something, to teach from the Word of God that might offend somebody because they, maybe they won't, they won't pay me or I won't get my money or I won't be able to pay the bills because I'm dependent. That's what's wrong, I think, a major major, major um, uh, flaw in the Judeo-Christian pastor lady uh, setup. The pastors and uh, the upper echelon, the bishops and the fathers and the priests and the Nicolaitans are over the laity, and the laity then just let them teach, let them study the Word of God, let them tell me what they think it means, and I'll just uh, repeat what I learned, or I think I know, and big mistake, folks, and you know where it's gotten us today. So one thing I learned from Luke 19, out of many, is that uh, the Lord expects us to increase, to multiply, to, to make a gain, to occupy ourselves, and in the furtherance of the kingdom and he gives us the talents he gives us the working capital and the one fellow there that uh, didn't increase at all he said you're an austere man and we have in luke 19 22 and he saith, the lord saith unto him out of thine own mouth 
Will I judge thee, thou wicked servant? This is at the end. He comes back and he wants them to give an account. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Why? And this is very interesting because the Lord is against usury. And yet he says, Why then gavest not thou my money unto the bank? unto the money lenders, unto the money changers, unto the triple parentheses bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with interest. And then he said unto them, that stood by, take from him the pound and give it unto him that hath ten pounds. The, this has been a very big encouragement to me, uh, Luke 19, because there's a there's a kingdom, the uh, Yeshua's kingdom, Jesus Christ's kingdom, is going to come here on the earth in the future. And when you have a kingdom, you have a ruler, and then he has those who administer, who rule, who... Um, take care of the everyday affairs of the kingdom. So it said, you'll be the ruler over 10 cities, you will have authority over five cities. And see, I'm looking forward to that, folks. You know what, there's gonna be a lot of people in the kingdom, in my estimation, and I might be wrong, it's my opinion, there's gonna be a lot of people in the kingdom, a lot of Israelites in the kingdom, but they're gonna be cleaning the outhouse with a toothbrush. And quite frankly, I don't wanna be one of those. This is serious stuff, and a lot of people, I, I don't think they get this. I don't know. I look around, and uh, uh, it's how we handle money. He that is faithful in the least is faithful also in the much. It's interesting, isn't it? That which we think is so important here in the United States, money is the, it's considered the least. The least. He that is faithful in the least is faithful also in the much and how we do with what we have in this life during this trial is going to depend or what what happens to us in the future is going to depend on what we do with what we have now and we have an opportunity to further God's kingdom here now on earth and be rewarded in the future i've always been in in regards to the kingdom i've always been a tent maker i, I built houses paul built tents but uh in in, in um what i'm saying is I, I earn i work my own way i pay my own way and i've started many businesses in the past year in the last few years and I have a business called Rocky Mountain Rocket Stoves, for example. It's up for sale. Somebody wants to buy it. It's a complete business. Tried to sell it before I left um, Montana without any, uh, f uh, without much luck. But uh, I haven't tried very hard. But uh, so the point is, when you make tents, and I think Paul actually helped other men. He paid their way too while they were with him. Uh, when you when you when you support yourself, you're not dependent on anyone else. You're not looking to the rich insurance executive in your congregation to pay your uh, help pay your bills, and uh, you're not looking for support uh, that you need to make your everyday bills from someone else. My support comes from Yahweh always has, always will. That doesn't mean that I don't go out and do what needs to be done to pay my bills. I do that. I have done that. I'm at the point in my life now where um, I can't do that anymore, okay? But I don't need to. I've cut my expenses down as low as they possibly can. I can't think of another a thing that I can do to, to reduce my expenses. Alrighty, so I'm not dependent. 
And that gives me the freedom to teach the Word of God as the Lord shows me. We have Paul here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. For though I am free from all, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. All righty. There's a, there's a really, there's freedom in not being dependent on anybody but the Lord to make sure that your needs are met. And so, um, this, I can teach um, on money. I can teach on economics from the scripture and um, can't be accused of, well, I can be accused, but I'm, I won't be guilty of uh, expecting anyone who uh, is uh, getting a benefit from the teaching. I don't expect them to support this channel. That's not up to me to decide. That's up to, that's up to the Father. He'll lay it on whoever's heart that he wants to lay it on to do whatever it is that he wants them to do. And our opportunity is to respond, is to increase, take the one and make it 10 and take the five and make it, I'm sorry, make the one and make it five. He doesn't want us to bury our talent. He doesn't want us to bury our resources in the ground. And he's, he's so much against not doing anything, not getting an increase that he says, why didn't you bring it to the bankers and at least get interest? Back up to verse 14, but his citizens hated him and sent a message, sent an embassy after him saying, we will not have this man rule over us. And now we go down to verse 27. After the teaching for those who were accepting what the Lord had to say, were open to his teaching, and who were the sons of Abraham, the, uh, the child of Abraham, and the son of Adam has a message for them. He, he taught them in a parable. And after he's all done with that, at the very end, he says, but those, those are the, the, the people who came to him in a delegation, the embassy, but those mine enemies, see, he's coming back. And when he does, but those mine enemies who would not that I should reign over them, rule over them, bring here and slay them before me. So much for the hippie Jesus, the love everybody Jesus within, in the Birkenstocks. Right here is Birkenstocks clacking. This way, that's Jesus. He says, bring my enemies here who don't want me to rule over them, to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. One last thing before I go, I guess that uh, quote, Professor Truth over there at the Bozo Farm uh, finally got outed and uh, I'm surprised it took him that long. <laughs> for your support of this channel and may the grace of God our Father Yahweh may his grace be upon us all for it should be obvious we most certainly need it see you